Every year, millions of people in the U.S. are affected by mental illness. In fact, suicide is the second leading cause of death among people aged 10 to 34. Babs Canicary lost half her family to suicide, and she's doing everything she can to shatter the silence on the stigma of mental illness. But first, Babs and her daughter Kayla tell us their family's heartbreaking story. And a warning, some of you uh, may find this segment triggering. Hey, I'm going to be seeing the killers when you're young, no doubt. Brianna was the youngest. Uh, she has an older sister. And Bri Kayla was about six when Brianna was born. And she was so upset because she was a girl. And I, for some reason, just thought, like, I want a brother, I want a brother. And then she came out and she was a girl, of course. So um, I was a little sad and mad, but then I got to hold her and stuff. And then it wasn't so bad. Brianna always, always, of course, wanted to be her big sister, wanted to be around her all the time. They were very close when uh, they were growing up. Um, I think every picture, they're always together. Um, like, I'm, I was more shy, and she was very outgoing. She liked talking to people. Like, she would go up and talk to anybody. She had a very sensitive heart. Something about her, she's just so contagious. Chris was such a selfless man. Family was everything to him. Me and the girls were his life. You know, it was really fun watching like comedy movies with him because his laugh was just infectious. And he was the one who uh, tried to hide if they stayed home from school. And he was kind of more of like who we went to like for fun and we wanted to like, you know, learn about stuff. He definitely taught us a lot of stuff when we were younger, so. Yeah, I had definitely heard of the choking game before. Um, I, Whenever I was younger, I had even done it with my friends. So what they are doing is uh, using restriction. Uh, you get a euphoric high and you feel good. Uh, I, If I would have known about that, I would have talked to Brianna about it. Um, you will die. Okay, so we just had dinner with Uncle Dean, <laughs> and we are leaving now because we celebrated Kayla's graduation. Was it good, Brianna? It was really boring, but the food was good. It was summertime, Brianna just got out of school, and so I just asked her what her day was like, uh, and we just chatted, and it was nothing, nothing uh, to be worried about. Went out in the hallway, and my mom was banging my sister's door, and I was like, well, what are you doing? And she's like, her door's locked, and Harley, which was our dog at the time, um, he's barking, and I can't get the door open. And she had two doors to her room, um, and so my dad was trying to open the door on the other side. All of a sudden, I just hear this, it's like, I just say it's like a monster, vicious sound, and he, unlock the door and all I saw was my daughter on the floor. My husband was over her. He was trying to resuscitate her. And then her face was just white. Like there's no color in her face. And so I still just didn't understand like what was going on. And my, and my that's when my, my dad was telling us that he found her in the closet and she was hanging like from a scarf. The next thing I really just remember is her laying in a hospital bed and she just had tubes everywhere. She was in the hospital for four days and Chris just wanted her to have time to rest. Um, the toughest things that we had to make the decision um, was to let her go. My, um, my dad took it the hardest. It broke my heart so bad to see him like that. We tried to get past it. I think that my, me and my mom were able to do it, but um, my dad wasn't able to get past it. <sighs> I mean, he, in, he intentionally uh, took his life. Uh, just like Brianna, he was in the closet uh, and you know, hung himself. This was the man who was the strength of our house. 
I mean, I'm having a baby and my dad's not here and my sister's not here. <laughs> and they haven't been here to like see me get married or anything. So it's just been really hard to like not have them here. How is this possible? I lost half of my family. Now what am I supposed to do? What is Kayla supposed to do? How are we gonna get through this? You just heard the heartbreaking story of the Canicary family. In 2010, 12-year-old Brianna unintentionally took her life while playing the choking game. Five years later, Brianna's father took his life. Um, today, we got Matriarch of the family. Babs, we are so grateful um, that you have the courage to be here today. Um, as a mother, I can only empathize with you, and um, I find your advocacy absolutely inspirational, so thank you. Uh, I have to ask you, it's been 10 years, I can only imagine 10 long years, to some of our parents, viewers out there who are also grieving, how are you doing in the grieving pro process? Um, it's every day, uh, and it's something different. Um, I'm doing better now, because uh, I started uh, to get help for myself, but it's definitely has been a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of parents who are still uh, unable to work, unable to get out of bed, uh, so it has definitely been um, a journey. If they're watching, if, if you don't mind me asking, what was that help That's and how question. long did it take yeah. you to receive that help? Uh, so it's taken me almost 10 years. Uh, you know, I've just never been one for um, prescription medication or anything like that. It, it, it's just me, I'm just afraid of that kind of, just of anything. And uh, so I was uh, really proud of myself that I um, kind of traveled the first half of this journey uh, without. Wow. Um, and, but I found myself in some very, very dark places. And I knew if I didn't do something. Um, so I was at my gynecologist <coughs> of all places, <laughs> and I broke down. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I let my wall down and shared my story with her, and uh, she prescribed me uh, medication, mm. and all of a sudden, my uh, the weight on my shoulders got lighter. It's like that film came off, wow. and um, I went to my car uh, smiling and crying and realized that I'm gonna be okay and there's gonna be hope. Uh, contacted my daughter and shared with her. Uh, she was very happy. Uh, so today I'm a lot better. Thank you for better. sharing that. Babs, Thank you. I, I have to ask you, as a father of three, your courage is staggering. I don't know how you are up here. I will never forget you and I'll never forget your courage. Uh, on behalf of every parent watching uh, that's probably heard of the choking game, because it's been, it's been around for a while, uh, it's evolved. How has it, how has it changed? I think how it's changed is uh, the kids are doing it on their own and they are using restriction. So they're using a scarf, a belt, anything. Um, and the other thing is um, they're, you're basically having dinner with your family and your child is like, okay, mom and dad, I'm gonna go do my homework and you're okay. And that's when they're doing it. They're not doing it in secret. They're not doing it when no one's home. Mm. They're doing it <laughs> you know, when everyone's home. And uh, it mimics adolescence, um, so they're irritable, um, they don't sleep well, they have headaches, and they sometimes will have marks around their neck. Wow, okay. wow that's important to know. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for being here. I've been on antidepressants for 15 years, and when you said the film comes mm -hmm. off, I know exactly what mm -hmm. you're talking about, so bravo for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think Brianna and, is what's your husband's Chris. name? Chris. are here today, bravo. Really yes. proud of you. Um, our DBL nation is very honest with us, and some of them might struggle with suicide. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to sort of take a moment back and say, what do they need to know? What can they do? And if it's today or any day, they'll remember this moment you spoke to them. What would you say to them? You know, I, it's a cliche, and I think that's what we have to do. Um, as a community is just to say the words, I need help. Mm. 
I need help. And I know they are the hardest words to say. And it took me almost 10 years <laughs> to say those words. And there are people who care about you and it's okay if our brain is not feeling good it's okay um, and it's okay if we're not perfect and um, you know we have to embrace who we really are because so many people are hiding behind social media yes. and this is who we this is who it happens to Wow. Yeah, it is okay to not be okay. Oh, yeah. And it is absolutely a gift to ask for help. So thank you for sharing your story today, Babs. Uh, again, we all commend you. And to our DBL Nation, if you'd like to learn more about Babs Cause, please visit thebreeproject.org. And also, here are some resources to help anyone who might be struggling, or if you know someone who is struggling, please reach out. They need, they need help. Hi, sorry, I'm having a moment here. Uh, yeah, for someone who's been depressed, and I've always been very honest, I was clinically depressed, you know, you see the spark in that other person. It takes one to know one in a yeah. weird way. So if anyone's struggling with medicine and it's uncomfortable, just know what she did five years with, five years without, and she feels more herself. Let's talk about you, though. What's the organization that you run, and how can people find it? Uh, it's thebreeproject.org. B-R-I, am I right? B-R-I, yeah. Um, and uh, can I talk a little bit about... Any, this um, floor is yours. So the one thing that I'm very proud of this year is it's going to be our very first uh, Mother's Bereaved Retreat. Wow. Uh, so it's in October, and I'm so excited about that. Ugh. Um, we have seven moms that we are uh, going to help, so I'm really proud about that. Uh, we focus more on the families that are left behind, uh, but of course, reaching out as well. Wow. To, to, to be honest, I think what we forget to think of is, yes, the immediate, but then the ripples effect of the family. How long until you felt like you again? Do you feel like you again? Um, I'm a different me. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. There's a whole different you. Yeah, wow. I'm not at all who I was before. Wow. Uh, but I am, I guess, finding myself, mm. and I'm finding myself every day. So it's just, I'm, I'm still tucked away inside, but I'm a different version. A stronger version. Tell me about Brianna, what she wanted to be. What was she like? Was she funny? <laughs> like, she sounds kind of like loud. Like, she's, I like her. I would like her. Yeah, she is very, uh, she's like me. She's very extrovert. Okay, yeah, I would have liked uh, her. Very dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Um, she probably would have been uh, climbing a high mountain or jumping off something. So daredevil know. a little bit. Yes. Really? Yes. And uh, what? And Chris was the same way? Uh, he was introverted. Introverted, but he was still, he would go like fishing and stuff or not? Uh, he liked to fish. But he so was the, the introvert. The things that wouldn't hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Man, well, I think they're watching today and uh, thanks again for being so Thank brave you. and vulnerable. It's not easy. Bree organization. The Bree Project. The Bree Project. B R I Project. Org. All right. All right. Uh, and if you have any questions and for Babs, please write us in. And if you're struggling, write us in with that kind of a show. What's that? Oh, and Facebook. Absolutely, you can go on Facebook as well. Yeah, we're on Facebook. The Bree Project. Uh, yes. Awesome. Yes. All right, guys. Please write us if you need us. We're here. That's why we do this to have conversations. Thanks again, Babs. Thank you. Yeah.